Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show, and it's time for your Leeds versus Newcastle post-match chat. Honestly, like, I'm fuming. Um, not happy at all. Um, it's sort of a good job that I have the drive home um, to to sort of calm down because I'd have said some daft stuff after full time. But, um, yeah, really, really frustrating. Really, really frustrating to... Not just even in this game, but I look at Newcastle and, and, and it does sound bitter and Newcastle fans watching this will, will hear it. But they'll come on, if you're honest, they're not great. They're not a great side. And for us to have only picked up one point against them in both games is not acceptable. Um, I thought today's performance, especially second half, was lacklustre. Um, really, really poor. Um, we'll go through it in some in some more detail, but just off the top of my head, I mean, that first half for me, I don't know what it translated to on TV or stats-wise. I heard someone say they had the same amount of shots as in that first half, but I thought, for me, we dominated in the first half. There was an attack within the first couple of minutes, and I was so confident pretty much. So, so confident. You know, I've I, I seen a few people, actually. I've seen Michael Normanson from the Square Ball. I've seen Gaz from Talking Shut. I've seen my friends that I go with and we were chatting. And I was saying, now we've got this. Don't sweat it. Um, because, you know, we normally have such a good record against teams down in, down in the bottom half, especially in the relegation zone. I think that will be Bielsa's first loss in the Premier League against a, a relegation side, those that are in there at the time of playing them, which is disappointing. But it's that kind of season for us, isn't it? It's up and down, topsy-turvy. You think back to, to, to last week, what a performance, two wins on the bounce. There's no better team to play right now other than maybe Norwich, you could say, than, than Newcastle. Um, and, you know, we we just threw it away. It's three points lost. Three points lost. They're not great. Um, their time-wasting throughout was absolutely abysmal. Um, I've never seen so many players go down with cramp in my life. Um, you know, it was really, really frustrating. I mean, I, I had to listen, obviously. I live in the northeast, so when I'm uh, when I was close to home, the radio was on and Eddie Howe was coming on talking about, oh, the, yeah, they did really well to a man and all that. And I just couldn't stomach it because to be honest, they were they were they were for me it felt like they were playing for a point and um, you know, they just time wasted throughout. I I can't remember how many times, you know, I seen Willock hit the deck. Um, Joel Linton, of course, Joel Linton went off injured a little bit later on. There was just so much of it, you know. They would just go down on the deck, player would come over, hold their leg up, you know what I mean? It was uh, it was really, really frustrating. But for me, quality-wise, Newcastle are just not it. Um, even St. Maximan, you know what my thoughts are on him from a personal standpoint, but of course he can carry the ball. But even him, he was just, he just whinged 24-7. He got himself booked at one point due to his remonstrations to the referee, but I thought we dealt with him, you know, and he was he was poor today. Um in that first half anyway, let me let me go back. I thought Leeds were gonna were gonna honestly I genuinely thought we we're gonna get a couple in the first half. Um, you know, so much space Jack Harrison found himself in. I remember saying I thought like Trippier, I, I do believe Eddie Howe changed it up because we did find that Rafinha and uh, Jack Harrison were in so much space against Dummett and, and Trippier and um, they seemed to drop deeper, maybe not push on as much and they struggled to find that space as the half went on. But initially, they was just having so much joy. Um, I feel, I've seen a lot of people say Rafinha was poor and he, did, he, he wasn't great in the second half. But, you know, in that first half, there's nothing much more he could have done than, you know, actually put it, in the net for whoever he was cutting it back for. It was so frustrating. There was one point where he, he did a little maze up on Paul Dummett. And it, I, I genuinely feel that's why Paul Dummett went off. He'd had enough of Rafinha. Um, but he crossed it. And, you know, I'm going to speak about Dan James. And I said this last week as well. When you win a game, Dan James is OK. You know what I mean? You can accept his frailties in terms of, his, his skill in front of goal because of what he offers to you from a pressing standpoint and you win the game, you feel all right about it. But when he's relied on and, and put in positions to get the goals and you're struggling, it's not good enough. That's why you need a number nine. And of course, we're without Bamford. And I think Bielsa said, he still don't think he'll be back after this break. I've said for weeks, there's something not right there. So ideally, well, no, we don't even need to bring in a striker. You just need to start Gellart. I said at half time, I would just bring him on because if 
So, for example, when Rafinha touched it back to him, yes, it's a difficult chance. Yes, Dubrov, Dubravka's on him. But maybe a Gelhart dinks that over or, or slots it in. And like I say, the one where, where Rafinha did a bit of a maze upon Dummett, like the cutback, all you had to do, if you're a striker, and I'm not a striker, but I'm just saying, just stand still. If you stand still, you're putting that ball in the back of the net. But I genuinely feel Dan James is at nine miles, you know, 10 miles an hour. So I don't know why I said nine, but like 10 miles an hour so that when the ball comes across, like he's probably done 10 laps of the box. It's just a bit like slow down. There was one point as well where he went down the right hand side, genuinely, right? And Rafinha had won the ball at halfway. Dan James set off. Um, Rafinha played him in behind. And I swear to God, from where I stand, I am screaming, look up, look up, because Rafinha was busting in. He didn't look up. He had his head down and it just went nowhere. You know, you need that extra little bit of sauce, that extra little bit of quality. And, and Dan James just doesn't have that, especially when he's relied on to get the goals. Um, you know, so so that was frustrating. I thought Cock was good today. What I, I will say that. Um, the, you know what cost us, don't you? It was the substitutions. Tyler Roberts, you know, I I I, I do try not to berate players. Um, but for me, Tyler is just not it. Like uh, to come on, to come on when he shouldn't have come on. Let's be honest, Gelhart should have come on for James. Right, and what's really frustrating about Bielsa, um, you know, and I, you know, I love the man, but when he makes these planned substitutions, and the fact that he said in the post-match presser that Roberts came on first today because Roberts was lined up to replace James, and James was on a booking, so that given that James was on a caution, Tyler was the first step to unbalance the game. That's why I chose to do it. Now, that tells me that that's a pre-planned, like before the match, you say, right, when we bring James off, Roberts is coming on for him. But just don't pre-plan that. Don't make that decision. Like, for me, Roberts shouldn't be near the, 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 the team. I've said it, and I feel bad saying it. But I don't, I, I don't think he should because he came on and did nothing. Um, he struggles to pass the ball. I think it's a confidence thing. And me and me and Sean were talking about it on the way down, saying like, you know, we wouldn't have been surprised if he'd have started. And I said he must be lighting it up in training. And maybe when he gets in front of a Pat Tellum Road, he struggles from a confidence standpoint and just wilts under it. But that goal that they scored, obviously the free kick, but the lead up to it, the lead up to it, on halfway, Roberts just lost it. He, 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 I'm sorry, but he's at fault for the goal for me. Because if he doesn't make that error, then Leeds United don't concede. And I still wouldn't have been happy with the point, if I'm honest. But you know what I mean? Tyler Roberts, he, 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 there was a number of times he could have passed the ball. You know, three opportunities to pass the ball. He even got lucky with one of them and you're right, like, move it on now, move it on. And he chooses not to. You know, he puts Lorenzi in a difficult situation. I've seen people say that it, he didn't need to make the foul, but from where I was seeing, yeah, he makes the foul. Um, and 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 obviously the score from the free kick, John Joe Shelby, um, it was always going to happen at that point. I think, you know, it had come to that point where we'd missed so many chances in the first half. There was even the Dan James one in the second half. I think Jack Harrison has a shot, takes a deflection, doesn't stay on his feet. Takes a swing at it and it's easy for Dubravka. Again, the striker finishes that for me. Um, that's what we're missing. And Gelhart is that guy. So so play him. Do you know what I mean? Play him. And if you're going to make a change, bring on Gelhart because he is the striker. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's a natural number nine. And I even think at half time, I'd have brought him on for James because we need a goal. And unfortunately, James isn't that guy, you know? He was in so many positions today. I, I felt anyway from where I'm, and it's like, oh, come on, man, please. And I have no confidence. This is the thing. I have no confidence. And and it's the same when, when Tyler gets it, genuinely. Like D James, I feel like I'm hammering it. He does an awful lot. And, and I'll go back to that point. When you win a game, he he is... He's, he's okay, like West Ham, we all accepted it okay, should have scored to make it 3-1, but we win the game. So I guess it smooths over the cracks a little bit. But when he's relied upon, i.e. we're not scoring from all angles and you're getting guilt-edge chances, he's not the guy to put it in the back of the net, unfortunately. And for £25 million, 
it sh- he should be better in that area of his game. Um, so I have no confidence, and Tyler's the same. You know, I, ha- I my confidence saps out of me when we're in dangerous situations, and and he has the ball, and it and and it's really hard for me to say it, but it, it's just a fact. That's how I feel as a fan when he has it in dangerous areas. The confidence drains out of me. Um, I've seen a lot of of a lot of Rodrigo bashing from my angle. I thought in the first half he was decent. Of course, in the second half he was he was poor. Um, you know, I think, yeah, they all were though. They, they all were. You know, we were crossing the ball against Newcastle, um, struggling to to create guilt edge chances. I mean, they're lost. They're so rubbish at the back, right? They're really really poor at the back. They know that, right? And they lose two of their starting eleven backline in Dummett and Lascelles. I think Mankio came on and um, and Kieran Clark, man. And we still couldn't break them down or, or or struggled to create chances after that. I think after that day, Dan James chance, it had just gone to pot when he missed that chance. Confidence and I just kept saying we're not going to score, we're not going to score, are we? We're not going to score. And then Shelby on the seventy fifth minute gets his opportunity. Melier should save it. In the ground, in the cop from where I was, it looked like it took a wicked deflection. Seeing it back, it doesn't. Melier takes a step to the right for whatever reason. I don't know if the bounce, beans, bounce, the bounce beat him, but it's not good enough and we expect better from Melier. I'll never, you know, come out here and berate that guy because he saved us more times than, he, than not. Do you know what I mean? But he should save that and he knows that himself. Um, it's just frustrating for me because I'm angry because I was annoyed after we got a point against them at St. James's Park because I think they're really poor and, and watching them is, is really poor. So to then get beat at home where we have a decent record this season, although we've been poor, we have a decent record at home. We don't get, you know, they're in the relegation zone. All these different factors, I have reason to be confident. I think everyone watching that game is is annoyed that we didn't win the game because you should win that game. And what that does is it obviously means I was talking to you, look, a bit of perspective. I know we're going to be okay. And I still stand by that point. And it's a little bit mad because it's the way the results went this weekend with Norwich beating Watford and all that sort of stuff. It's sort of as you were down there. Newcastle had to win, obviously, to stay in touch. But, you know, and we gifted them that really. But I still think we're fine. Obviously, we're in 15th place, 22.7 over Newcastle. Um, so so we're still all right. Do you know what I mean? It's just we could have been well out of the woods, obviously. Everton get beat today. Brentford get beat today. You know, Crystal Palace haven't played, but we'd have gone above Crystal Palace on, on level points for Southampton. You know what I mean? And and that's in 12th. Instead, we've given gifted Newcastle three points because we were rubbish and, and we're still not out of the woods. And I wanted to say that's three wins in the bounce, out of the woods. Let's move. But instead... But I feel that that's the kind of season we're going to have in it. We're going to get to the 38th game at the end of this season and go, that was tough, but we're still here. Now, let's make moves in the summer. Let's make moves in the summer. And of course, there's knee-jerk reactions all over social media. Oh, we need to sign this. We need to sign that. I genuinely don't think we need to sign a striker. We just need to play Joffy Gelhart. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Of course, we need additions. And... You know, if we don't bring it, if we don't bring anyone in this window, people will be fuming. But I think, okay, we'll still be all right. And I know people won't go along with that standpoint, but I still think we'll be all right. But what that then does, it means it's more pressure in the summer and it's more major upheaval, which we could do without. So it's better to bring in some players now to start that, you know, that 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 moving on process because you're bringing in a an Aronson, for example, to take over a click. And you know, I don't know why we brought click off either. Um, I, I, I genuinely don't know why we brought Click off either because even when he's not involved in the game, just his off-ball runs and stuff, it, it, it creates space, um, you know, for, for other people. I think maybe the substitution should have been Rodrigo at that point, but probably Bielsa's thinking of a goal, isn't he? And, and Rodrigo is a striker, is a... Well, he hasn't been so much at Leeds, but you know what I mean? He knows where the back of the net is, but he wasn't really on it today. It was disappointing to see... Rafinha will out of the game as well. But I think the the thing that swung it, and, you know, Bielsa spoke about how he he made the decision to unbalance the game by bringing on Tyler, and that's why I did it. Well, he did unbalance the game, but it unbalanced it 
in the opposition's favour. You know what I mean? So that's the 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 disappointing thing. You know, the game management and the substitutions and the times in which they were at were just not on it today. Um, so yeah, look, for me, I'm sort of glad for a break. I need a break after today because I'm genuinely fuming with that. So I need a break. Um, I think we'll probably have a rescheduled game against Aston Villa FA Cup weekend because Aston Villa are out as well. So I think we'll probably squeeze that in there, the one at Ellen Road, and then we'll play them away on the 8th. Uh, sorry, on the 9th of Feb, which is my birthday. I'll be 34, so hopefully uh, we win on that day. But yeah, just really disappointing because we should have beat them today. They've won one game all season, people. One. Now two. Now two. And it's funny because I spoke to Claudio as well before the game and he went, you're giving me Wigan vibes. How confident you were for Wigan in the championship. You're giving me similar vibes. And it proved to be the case, didn't it? Proved to be the case. But I had no bearing on that. <laughs> Me being confident has no bearing on where the game lands. But yeah, look, it is what it is. We've been beat, not good enough against the poor Newcastle side. Picking up one point against them all seasons, not for me because they're rubbish. Newcastle fans watching this, if you've managed to stay at the end, I it probably is bitter, but come on, you know yourself, you're poor. Um, you know, and yeah, I don't know. Newcastle had to win though, didn't they really? And that's maybe that extra bit that got them over the line, although we gifted them it. Robert's gifted them it. Um, Robert's gifted them it. And, 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 and I think, you know, some will say maybe you've been a little bit too harsh on Roberts, but it's a number of times now, isn't it? It's a number of times. And I just, I've been in the ground and seen it happen on halfway and knowing that you have the opportunities to release the ball, you choose to keep, it's frustrating because you travel, you do all that and you're like, you know, it is, it is frustrating. But listen, we just got to keep going, haven't we? This is how the season's going to be, up and down. And we're having a down. We had a great up last week. Let's hope next fixture it's an up. You know, because it is what it is. We'll be all right. Um, we will be all right. But yeah, today's rubbish and it'll take some getting over. Probably won't watch any more football this weekend now, but it is what it is. But I've got this new jacket, so cold. So that's something. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching. If you can, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment and, of course, hit that notification bell because I will be doing some little lives throughout this little break. Um, and we'll be live tomorrow. Um, maybe Kendall will come on and uh, and rub it in my face after saying that we've beat them. Um, but, yeah, thanks as always for watching. Peace out. Lee, Lee, Lee.